What do you reckon to hypnosis then? And more to the point, what do you think about regression, past life regression? Do you know what it means? We'll find out because I'm in the East Devon town of Branscombe this afternoon and I'm with Bob Hume and his brothers Peter and Carl. Bob, you're a hypnotist. Uh, yes, as a hobby, yes. Not a profession, it's just a hobby, yes. And you're not from this neck of the woods? No, we're from the Midlands, Birmingham area, but we've come down to Branscombe this week for four or five days to do some research into a past life connection that we believe we made about ten years ago. We stood outside the church here. Let's, let's go in and whilst we do, can you tell me what regression is? Regression, hypnosis and regression, when they're combined, is an altered state. Hypnosis is an altered state. And by using the regressive stage, i.e. taking the person back through that hypnotic state and going further and further back beyond when they were born in this life into a previous life connection. We all believe, or many people believe, we've had past lives. Using hypnosis and regression, we believe we can connect into that past life and start talking to that person who lived, in some cases, hundreds of years ago. Is it dangerous? Because we do hear of um, hypnosis coming under fairly strict rules and regulations. There are grey areas and parts where people should be very wary because you, there are people you shouldn't hypnotise, i.e. people who unfortunately may have brain disorders or so on, uh, highly sensitive people, very young children, lots of people shouldn't attempt it. Normal, rational people done for the right reasons, and of course hypnosis is being used now in the medical profession, used for the right reasons and the right purposes and done on that basis, no, it's not dangerous. There is no, whatever people say, there is no recorded uh, incident of anybody dying or becoming brain damaged through it. No. But as a hobby, uh, that suggests that you have no real qualifications, would that be right? Yes, but the only difference between a hobby uh, and a profession is the man makes a living out of it. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I All still right. have the same expertise and length of experience, time-wise. But does no, it, it's not a profession. Does it hurt? <laughs> um, people sometimes do say they feel physical pain, people have cried under hypnosis and said they've been in pain, but once they come back to this life, this person now, they're back to their normal self. They don't retain any physical or mental um, problems from it, no. Your patient, for want of a better word, yes. is, guinea pig. is your, <laughs> guinea pig, yes. Yes. Is your brother Peter? He is indeed, yes. He came into it voluntarily, um, it wasn't organised originally, his sister, uh, daughter-in-law was going to be the subject, and she backed out at the last minute. And we always have to allow this and not take too trauma out of it because people do get second thoughts at the last minute. So Peter volunteered to take her place and from that day, you know, over ten years ago, when he became John Raphael, uh, apparently during the Civil War period as a foot soldier in the Cromwellian Parliamentary Army, uh, we've been researching ever since on that one particular man. Wind's picking up. Let's just pop into the foyer of the church. We'll go through in a minute because there is a, a reason, as you say, for us being here. Yes. But Peter's with us. Peter, can you remember that day that you were regressed and, and how you felt? Oh, absolutely, yes. It's very, very clear in my mind. As Rob said, you know, my daughter had backed out, so I volunteered. Something actually was telling me to go for it. And then, of course, I started uh, talking about the English Civil War and my part in it. Um, how I was taken from the farm where I worked in Highland. What, what, what was going through your mind at this time? I mean, were you actually living as another person? Were you thinking as another person? Oh, yes, of course. So. Yeah, absolutely, yes. So, so where did the point come where you were no longer Peter and you were now John? When I was um, talking about my past life under hypnosis, I was this person, John. Yeah, but what I need to get my head around is... Um, um, Perhaps, Bob, you can explain this yes. one better. Is you, you start regressing someone from their present life, from, from, from As today. the person they are now, yes. And you take them back through their present life, gradually, or in some cases in jumps, back, and then tell them they're going beyond the time when they were born, and they go into the darkness, and now it's getting lighter, and they're coming back as the person they used to be in another life. Once that happens and they come back to this present moment, to them it's the present time. But they're obviously can be hundreds of years ago. You they, have they, no they idea. Person. You have no idea at this stage who, who they the are, person. or even if they've gone to another life. It is then when you think they're there and they look as though they might have altered phys physically, facial-wise. You say, "Who are you? Where are you? What year is it?" They alter physically as well. They can get expressions on their faces that alter. Sometimes their voice will alter. Even dialects will alter in some cases. I've had people who have talked in fluent French. When they come back, they can't speak French. You know, so you do get physical and mental changes, yes. But once they come back to who they are now, they're back normal. They're no longer that other person. So it's the same when they're going to that other person. They go through a transition period beyond the time when he was born, as he is now, 
and into that other life. They then become that person. And some people you can regress and others you can't? There's some people who put a natural barrier up even though they might have volunteered. It's just something that happens. They, they, they are either shy off and don't want to do it anymore or they just physically can't do it. And there are obviously people that you shouldn't hypnotise. So do you believe then that we've all led a life before the one that we're in there? I believe souls and spirits are sort of around us and they pass on into a new person. They say the life and soul and of a person is eternal. It goes on even though the physical body dies, decays. The soul carries on into another life and starts again. So is there no new life? Is it all recycled? Well, of course, we're not all experts in this yet because science hasn't pinned it down that, that uh, narrowly. But um, we all say we've had a spirit and a soul. And how many times have you heard a person say, that child's been here before? We all say it. Yeah, but the, the mind does wonderful things, doesn't it? Yes. I mean, deja vu, for oh, instance, yeah. and you think you've yes. been somewhere we where, can where you've never story. been before. You can give someone three, that's three words, uh, a rabbit, field, and a barn, and they'll make a story up out of it. We can all fantasise. But when you get a person, in this case such as Peter, giving detailed, accurate information that we've now researched of places that existed, events that took place, archaeologists, historians didn't know about, and we've gone and proved that it happened, you then have to say, this guy isn't making this up. Was it just like dreaming, Peter, or did you have other feelings as well, other, other senses working? Oh, yes, I, I'm actually there. I know what's going on around me. You know, I can describe the, you know, the battle scene at Newbury when I was badly taken away. I'm actually going through the motions. Can you do that for us now? Well, I, I don't I mean, know. How much of it can you remember once you come out of regression? I remember it all. I remember it all, yes. I remember the questions that are being asked and the answers I'm giving. So you were John Raphael? That's right. At Newbury? Yeah, that was the first battle that I was actually involved in in 1642, when I was injured on the battlefield. Uh, and then taken to a place about four miles away to be treated for my injuries. Well, I received a head wound, you know. Yes. You know. One of the interesting aspects of this as well is that people say, oh, it's past life memories. Mm. But when I say to Peter, where are you? He never talks in the past tense. He says, I am in this place. To him, it's now. It's not a memory. If I then say, all right, it's 1642, you've told me. Go back to 1642. What were you doing then? Then he starts remembering it. That's a memory. But if I say, it is now 1642, where are you? He's physically in 1642. It's now, today. It's not a memory anymore. You can do both. We're physically today in Branscombe. We are indeed. Why are we here? Well, through the research that we've been doing for the past ten years, we've been trying to piece together this man, John Raphael, his life and his events during the Civil War and so on. And through computer uh, analysis now, we've now found that in the 17th, 16th and 18th century, there were a whole family of Raphaels living in this village. And we brought Peter down here today to see if he can reconnect with that past life, which he actually did this morning when we first arrived. We were walking down the village street, first time for Peter in this life, and he said, I can't see the church, but I know it's down on the right in a dip. And he'd never researched the village, he'd never been here before. He also said at the bottom of the church, where the river is, and he hadn't seen the river, there was a bridge going over the river, which obviously there would have been to get across it. Sid, the curator uh, in the local village, told us, and church warden, sorry, <laughs> told us that the cottages actually used to be down there. That isn't the original street. And there was a bridge, and still is a bridge, over the river. Not the original one, I dare say, but Peter had got facts right about a village he's never visited before in this life. Set of lucky circumstances, Peter. Of course. Well, you could say that, yes, yeah. yes. You see, what you happened, um, at the time, I was living in Comstock, and there was a Raphael family, I don't know if they were cousins, or I'm not sure what they were, but they left Comstock to come and live here. And um, they were a married couple. The, the mother gave birth to twins while she was here, and the first twin died after about four weeks. And then the other twin died about three weeks later. That's why we're here trying to find out if there's any evidence of this family being here. And what sort of questions are you asking if Sid, let's say hello to Sid and bring him into the, the conversation in fact. Sid, you're the... the Church 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 yeah. So you've got your finger on the pulse of all the records. And yeah, we've got the records from 1539 to the present day. Do you believe in all this stuff? Yes. Um, I'm fascinated by it. I've got an open mind. One comment you made just now about soul and spirits. 
which I agree with, your souls and spirits are around all the time. I mean, and not until the end of the world will our spirits be all put together. But they are all around. Because we've actually, the village have actually made up a ghost book. And, you know, the, the different ghosts that's around the village. It's a lovely village, Brad. Can we go in and look in, yeah, the, in yeah. the church? Yes. Yeah, quite what, what sort of things are you looking for here then, Bob? What are you trying to find? Well, the church records are always a very good point to start on. Obviously, archives are very good also. But church records are very good if you can get hold of the originals. And Sid, obviously, has got some records from the church, being the warden. And we do know from some of the records he's shown us that they definitely were Raphaels involved in the church and things going on around it in the village. So we know the Raphaels were here. And it's also interesting that when Peter first arrived this morning, he was connecting with things that he couldn't have known about. Very simple, and people say, oh, well, he was lucky, he made a good guess. You can't do that. But in other things, in other villages that he's connected with, there is no way he made it up or connected through just pure fantasy or chance. There's far too many that we've connected with him. Is it important for you to have proof, Peter? Oh, of course, yes. Otherwise, you know, the sceptics are going to have a field day with us. And we do come up with a lot of evidence, of, you know, from various places, information. It always checks out. So what well, do you, 90% of it. Then. What do you need from Sid now? Well, we were trying to get some information about these twins that were buried here, I think in 1652. But, um, it's not a gaze. I register. The first Raphael came from far away, married in Branscombe Church in 1761. And the last Raphael, Tommy Raphael, died in 1948. So we've, the only way, unless he came from far away and got married in Branscombe Church and went back out to far away, and unless in 16, there was no record kept of the Raffles that come to Branscombe. What a peculiar feeling, Peter, if you come across your own grave. How would you feel? Oh, about? I've already come across that in Nottinghamshire. You found your grave? Oh, yes. In Highland, in Nottinghamshire. At least, so I'm pretty sure. If I could just interject there, we have found a grave that Peter stood over and felt physically sick and ill. And at first, when we scratched away at the, uh, the moss on the writing, it did come out John and then an R, but it was Wallinson or something. But yeah. what we have found in the village of Colmstock, where we know the marriage of John and Elizabeth Bishop and John Raphael took place in 1652. That is recorded there. Before Peter even visited that church in that village, he told us the name of the church, which he'd never been to, and he was right. He also said there was a tree growing out of the tower, and there is still, and we know it's been there for over 300 years. He also knew that there used to be a spire on the tower, which records now show was taken down in the 17th century, so he was right again. And a local historian has told us that on a particular spot just outside the front of the church, you're standing on the Raphael burial plot. It's just too much to connect to be fantasy. Like Sid, I'm fascinated by all this, but it would be remiss of me not to challenge you. And you said earlier on that modern technology can do wonderful things. Now, you've come from the Midlands. Yes, yes. A couple of clicks on your computer mouse could probably have brought up all the information you've just told me. No. One of the records that we have, which is contains six Civil War maps of the 17th century. We wrote to the Scottish authorities, and I have the letter in the car back from the authorities, stating they had no knowledge of a castle that Peter had talked about on hypnosis, certainly by that name, and certainly in that period, ever being attacked or existing. And for four years, they denied all record knowledge of it. Eventually, about two years ago, we managed to get out of those same archive people six 17th century maps. One of the maps called the castle by the name Peter had called it four years earlier. You can't do that by chance. Or get the information, then make the story up. You can't do it that way. Well, you can if you're very clever, but we haven't done it that way. Okay. We don't do it for that reason. Well, for someone to come all the way from the Midlands down to Devon to search this out, you obviously believe in it, regardless of 100%. what anybody else thinks. 100%. I'm sure you'd agree with me that it's not something to be taken lightly or tried at home, hypnosis, without Certainly not. somebody knowing what they're what doing. They're doing. Bob, in, thank in, you. in hypnosis, I can just finish off. In hypnosis, it's not knowing what to do when you're doing hypnosis. It's knowing what not to do. Those are the important parts, knowing what not to do. Okay. The rest is easy. Bob, Peter, Sid, thank you very much for joining us on Chatterbox this lunchtime. Now, what do you think? 